Hi students, in this video, we're going to be covering the second part of 2.7, which is ju just dealing with complex solutions. All right, so remember the discriminant of a quadratic function is that b squared minus 4ac value. Let's make up an, uh, make up an example. So if we have f of x equals, uh, we'll say x squared plus 4x plus um, 10. So we know a is one, b is four and c equals positive 10. And so if we did b squared minus 4ac, so b squared minus 4ac is going to equal um, 16 minus four times one times 10. So that's 16 minus 40, which is negative 24. So when that discriminant is less than zero, it means that you're going to get two complex solutions that are going to be of the form A plus BI and B might be um, a square root. It could be a square root, but we don't know. Uh, it's going to, so your two solutions are going to be A plus BI and A minus BI. And uh those values always occur in pairs so that means that if you see a solution that's like three plus four square root i then three minus four square root i is also going to be a solution and these things could also be divided by like a number so that that still means if like three plus four i divided by two is a solution then three minus four i divided by two is another solution and again we can get square roots involved in this so let's see how that looks so we need to find the solutions to uh, 2x squared minus x plus 3. Now, if I were you, uh, anytime I see a quadratic, I would just do the quadratic formula. It's quicker than uh, trying to factor. So we're going to get x equals negative b. So let's identify. So a is 2, b is negative 1, and c equals 3. So we need to find the solutions to 2x squared minus x plus 3. That's pretty straightforward. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared is going to be 1 minus 4 times 2 times 3. Uh, and all divided by 2a, so 2 times 2. So we get 1 plus or minus the square root of... So four times two is eight times three is 24. So one minus 24 is negative 23 divided by um, four. So when we take the square root of a negative, we pull out an I. So I is the square root of negative one. So remember that from algebra two, I is the square root of negative one. So we get one plus or minus I square root 23 over four and that's two complex solutions which again means that this function does not have any real number solutions which means that that function doesn't cross the x axis so again we just use the quadratic formula and we get our two solutions immediately um so example two given that x equals two and x equals one third are roots for that quartic or fourth degree polynomial we need to find the other remaining roots so if i give you the roots ahead of time you can do synthetic division on this polynomial twice to find the other roots because i give you two roots it means you can do synthetic division twice so first let's do synthetic division let's just go ahead and get the one third out of the way so we're going to have one third. And remember, for synthetic division, you just write all of the coefficients. So we get three, negative one, six, negative 38 and 12. We're going to bring down the three. So one third times three. Oh, man, it's going to go off the rails. You know what? Let's use the two first. Uh, I don't feel like dealing with fractions right now. So let's deal with the, um, let's do two instead. So two, oh, I'm going to write in black though. So let's use uh, two. So two times three is six. Negative one plus six is five. Two times five is 10. 16 plus 10 is, uh, I mean, six plus 10 is 16. Two times 16 is... Did I write the right numbers? Three, negative six, three, negative one, 
6, negative 38, and 12. I'm going to say a 2 and 1 third are roots. So 2 times 3 is 6. Negative 1 plus 6 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 6 times 10. 2 times 16 is uh, 32. Negative 38 plus 32 is negative 6. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And we get a remainder of 0. My apologies. All right. So we, remember, we started out with x to the fourth. So now, temporarily, we want to get f1 of x is 3x cubed plus 5x squared plus 16x minus 6. Uh, and we need to do synthetic division with the 1 third now. So we're going to have 1 third times. Uh, so then we're going to have 3, 5, 16, and negative 6. And we're going to bring down our 3. So one third times three is one. Five plus one is six. One third times six is two. Two sixteen plus two is eighteen. One third of eighteen is six, and negative six plus six is zero. So now we've reduced this down to this f two of x is three x squared plus six x plus eighteen. And so we need that to find our two remaining solutions. So we're going to just erase this. And so now we can factor, not factor, do the quadratic formula. So we're going to do the quadratic formula with, um, so we're going to have F2 of X. And I would just, like, since uh, we want to find the solutions, just set that equal to zero. And everything is divisible by three. So that's the same as having x squared plus 2x plus 6 equals 0. So if we do the quadratic formula, x is going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus, so uh, minus 4 times 1 times 6, all divided by 2. So that's negative 2 plus or minus the square root of uh, 4 minus 24 is negative 20. So divided by 2. So the square root of negative 20 is the square root of negative 4 times the square root of 5. This is 2i. So we get just 2i root 5. So this is negative 2 plus or minus 2i square root 5 divided by 2. And so everything has a 2, so we get negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 5. Those are our two, uh, our other two remaining roots. So we got 2, we have 1 third, negative 1 plus i square root 5, negative 1 minus i square root 5. Uh, the next one is a similar kind of problem. We have x equals uh, 5, x equals negative 1 fifth, and we want to find the other remaining roots. So again, let's do synthetic division. We're going to have negative 1 fifth. Let's just get that one out of the way. This time we won't chicken out. So we have 5, negative 19, negative 19, negative 53, negative 10. Woo! Let's see what that turns into. So uh, let's bring down uh, 5. So negative 1 fifth times 5 is negative 1. Negative 19 plus negative 1 is negative 20. Negative 1 fifth times negative 20 is positive 4. Um, negative 19 plus 4 is negative 15. Uh, negative 15 times negative 1 fifth is 3. Negative 53 plus 3 is negative 50. And negative one fifth times negative 50 is positive 10. So we get a remainder of zero. We did it. And so now we want to do synthetic division with x equals five. And we're just going to take these values of five, uh, negative 20, negative 15, and negative 50. And we're just going to do the exact same process, bring it down to five. So... 5 times 5 is 25. Negative 20 plus 5 is 5. 5 times 5 again. 
is 25. Negative 15 plus 25 is 10. 5 times 10 is 50. Negative 50 plus 50 is 0. So we get our remainder of 0 like we wanted. And so again, we're left to solve the equation um, f2 of x is 5x squared plus 5x plus 10 equals 0. You can divide everything by 5. So you're solving x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. It seems like it should factor, but it doesn't. So if we do the quadratic formula, we're going to get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times 1 times 2, all divided by 2 times 1, which is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus um, 8 is negative 7. So negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 over 2, which is negative 1 plus or minus i square root 7 divided by 2. And so our two remaining roots are negative 1 plus i square root 7 over 2 and negative 1 minus i square root 7 divided by 2. And for example, 4, we have a, a, a function that we can factor by grouping. So we're going to take out an x squared for the first group. So that's going to give us x squared times 3x plus, nope. Uh, take that out, Mr. Are you tripping? Uh, where's my eraser? So that should be a 3x squared that we can take out. Um, that's going to give us 3x squared times x plus 2. And then from the 5x plus 10, we're going to take out a 5, and that's also going to give us x plus 2. Since we're finding roots, we'll just set that equal to 0. So in one case, we get 3x squared equals, uh, well, let's write the entire thing out. So 3x squared plus 5, x plus 2 equals 0. So one of the roots is easy, x equals negative 2. So then if 3x squared plus 5 equals 0, 3x squared equals negative 5 x squared equals negative 5 divided by, uh, can I turn it into a 3? Sure. So x squared equals negative 5 thirds. And so x equals uh, positive and negative square root negative 5 over square root negative 3. I mean, positive 3, excuse me. So if you multiply by the square root of 3, you're going to get plus and minus i square root 15 divided by 3. Take out the square root of negative 1 to get the i. So our solutions are um, i root 15 over 3, negative i root 15 over 3, and negative 2. We factor via grouping, which is something we know how to do. And the last is the 5x to the fourth plus 12x squared minus 9. It's in quadratic form. You know that because you have 4, 2, and no power. So you go from the degree, half the degree, no power. So uh, 5x to the fourth times negative 9 is negative 45x to the fourth. So we're looking for factors that would be 15x squared and negative 3x squared. So that's going to rewrite as 5x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 15x squared minus 9. Since we're finding roots, set that equal to 0. So let's see. We can take out an x squared. That's going to give us 5x squared minus 3. And you can take out a, a 3. So plus 3. And that's going to give you 5x squared minus 3 as well. And we get x squared plus 3 times 5x squared minus 3 equals 0. So we get x squared plus 3 equals 0. 
So x squared equals negative 3. So x is going to equal positive and negative square root negative 3, which means we get plus and minus i square root 3. And then if we have, oh, let's go back. So if we have 5x squared minus 3 equals 0, that's a terrible 2. So you get 5x squared equals 3 x squared equals three fifths so x equals plus and minus um square root three over square root five which is the square root of 15 over five so our solutions are plus and minus i square root three and plus and minus the square root of 15 divided by five so that is us dealing with complex solutions. They always occur in pairs.